Welcome back to another video, Samuel here. Um, today I want to show you the new X-RAW Studio from Fujifilm. It basically brings you the in-camera RAW processing to your desktop computer, but it is still using the camera's processor, so you will be editing from your camera, but you will see it on a bigger screen. If you have a calibrated monitor, it's way better to judge your exposure and your colors than just using your camera. So let's start. Um, first, you have to make sure that your camera has the latest firmware. I think right now you can only use uh, the X-RAW Studio if you have a GFX, uh, the X-T2 or X-Pro2 and the X100F. So what we need is the camera and a micro USB cable. And before you connect your camera to your computer, you have to go into the menu, make sure that you go to the wrench, to connection settings, PC connection mode, and there you have to uh, set it to USB raw conversion. So if you've done that, you will now connect your camera. Then you will see a green light here. That means that the camera is connected. Okay, so we have the X-RAW Studio here. Just drag it into your application folder and it should be installed. So let's open it. Okay. And you have this small window here. It's a bit small. I wish they would just open it full screen, but it is what it is. So yeah, now it's full screen. And here on the top, it says waiting for camera. So I think you have to turn on your camera now. Now you see the light is blinking. And as you can see, we have our Fujifilm X100F here. Yeah, normally you would see your images on the bottom here from your SD card, but it doesn't show me. This is not good. Wieso geht das nicht? Okay, now we are back. I had a few technical difficulties. So first of all, my camera didn't um, send my images from my SD card to the software. I couldn't see them here in the bottom line. But I have a few raw files here that are on my hard drive. But your camera has to be connected because it uses the processor of your camera. So we have our navigation uh, here and the histogram and our image information. It is a bit small. I wish I could uh, drag them further down. Um, I see you can uh, close this and then you can see more. But yeah, I wish they would allow us to adjust it a little bit more. Uh, on the right side, we have all the settings that we also have in our camera raw processing. And you can turn off the JPEGs. So right now it is showing me raw and JPEG. But if I click on this, it will only show me my raw files. Let's open up an image. Maybe this. So now I shot this um, with Acros. So it's black and white and here are exactly my settings that I had on my in my camera. And let's change it to classic Chrome, for example. And you can see it changes my film simulations now. Provia. Let's keep it classic Chrome. Let's keep it classic. So on the top we have the um, exposure or the EV stops. And here we can adjust the brightness. And we have the dynamic range and I set it to auto. So this is why I can change it back to dynamic range 100, but I will leave it at 200. And this is really just basic stuff that you can already do uh, in your camera. But I think it is nice that you can do it on your computer with a big screen and maybe more accurate uh, colors. Yeah, let's change a bit more here. Highlights, let's say plus one. Let's make it a really contrasty image. Shadow tone, maybe plus two. Yeah, and color, uh, I think it's fine at zero. Sharpness plus two is okay. Now we are seeing the image in full view, but you can also go to 100% to show the 100% crop. Or you just zoom in manually. And on the top left corner, you have the option to see your changes. So you can see your image side by side. And on the left side, we have the image. 
I don't see any differences. Um, but it should show you the changes you made and the original image. If you want to save your image, you can go up to file. No, that's not it. <laughs> ah, okay, I see. You have to go to convert here. So if you want to save this now, you click on convert. It will convert your image to a JPEG file. And we will not see it on the bottom line. So we have to go here to uncheck this. Now we can see our JPEG files. And where is it? So I think this is our edited picture. Yeah, it's now saved on, not on my camera. It's saved exactly at the same location where, where you have your raw files. Oh, and you can copy the, the um, conversion profile. So let's say uh, we want this image to have the same settings. We can paste in the conversion profile. And now it has the same uh, settings, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we discovered everything that uh, we can do here. Okay, let's do one more just for fun. So again, on the left side, we can see the histogram, all the informations, shutter speed, aperture, image size, and so on. But I don't see ISO. Hmm. Okay, so, and on the right side, let's edit this picture here. Um, Let's make it, let's make it a contrasty black and white. So let's go to, set it to across and uh, really low contrast on this image here. Let's push it to 2 EV. That is probably too much, but we will try anyways. Let's make it a plus three shadow. Wow, this is really contrasty now and highlights let's yeah zero okay let's push the shadow even more plus four now this is a bit too much for my taste let's go back to plus three and let's turn on a grain effect let's make it really strong and let me check the hundred percent view And uh, I think the difference here would be that Lightroom would give you a different grain rendition. So maybe this is an advantage if you like the Fujifilm grain. Now let's say we want to edit all our pictures here. So all the ones that are down here and make them also black and white. And one way to do it is by save this as a profile. So let's say black and white contrasty. Okay. And if we just show the raw files, then we have here three more images and let's select them. And you can paste conversion profile. No, I want to, let me try it. Uh, oh, this is not what I want. Okay, I think we have to copy this profile here and then select all three images and then paste it. Yeah, now every picture here should be black and white. Yes, so but it doesn't show me a black and white preview. This is... DISAPPOINTED! Would be nice if I could see what I'm doing here. So let's convert them all at the same time. So this one and the other three. Come on. Little trouble there. Okay. Now convert. Not so bad, not so bad. It's not really slow. I, I was expecting it to be slower than Lightroom, but Lightroom is really slow when it comes to converting RAWs to JPEGs. Now, because I don't see my JPEGs, I have to uncheck this here. 
Now it should show me my JPEG files. But I have to search for them, which is um, kind of annoying. Um, I think I think they are here. And here they are. Um, let me see if I can uh, reorganize them so I can see the latest changes. So I can uh, sort it to show me the file name. Okay. Okay. Disappointed! Now here are my edited images. And again, they are saved in the same location where my raw files are. I think I cannot change where to save them. So I, there's no save as option. It will just save it in the same folder. So in short, let me summarize my first impression. I like the simplicity of it, but at the same time, I would like to have more options to customize my interface. It is nice that Fujifilm gives us this option, um, especially if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop, or you really don't want to use Lightroom. To be honest, I myself, um, I'm not really using Lightroom anymore. I just edit in my camera and I edit on my phone anyways, because most of my images go straight to Instagram. Um, I think it's nice that we can use the same uh, processing, get all the Fujifilm colors and uh, tones on our computer now. And of course, you can also use Lightroom and Photoshop and get the same film simulations, but they are not really 100% the same. You, the Fujifilm in-camera JPEGs are a bit different. If you like them, then you can only get them if you edit in your camera or use the x Studio. Let me think why this software exists. Um, maybe this is for the purest photographer who just wants to go out and shoot, come back home, just connect the camera with the computer and edit the best images. But at the same time, you have to connect your camera, so it's not so convenient. It would be nice if it maybe works wireless someday or maybe you can just not connect your camera. Um, it's not a big deal. I think if you are um, someone who travels a lot and you have your laptop with you and you're on the plane or on the subway, then it's a quick way to edit your raw files. Just check it out. If you have an X100F or the X-T2, X-Pro2, then try it out, see if it works for you. Maybe Fujifilm should work a little bit more on the software, make it a bit snappier, give us a few customization options, maybe allow us to save the images to a different location. I don't know, I, I'm not sure. I think it's good that we have it. There you have it. This was my first impression video on the Fujifilm X100, no, not X100, the X Raw Studio software. I hope you got something out of it. Um, just try it out. Uh, yeah, that's it. See you in the next one. You don't come out on the street day after day and pound it. You're not going to get yeah. pictures of this. You can't just yes. pay a visit to it. Yes. As if it's a field trip, you know.